Hi, Jared from Wild Ridge here. We're taking a look at Bayberry, Morella Pennsylvanica, formerly called Mirica Pennsylvanica. My wife Rachel called this the poor man's rhododendron when we put a big hedge of it outside of our deer fence here. It's a deer resistant native shrub. One of the things that appeals to me about Bayberry is it has these really lustrous, I'd say reluctantly deciduous, definitely not evergreen, but long lasting leaves that are really nice re aromatic. They've got some overtones of citrus and definitely of bay. So bay is a Mediterranean shrub that is probably the na namesake here for bayberry. Um, it's in the Lauraceae, the Mediterranean bay, which is the same family with sassafras and spice bush and avocados and stuff like that. So this is not a relative, but it has similar aroma and as we'll get to some similar uses. Then again, this plant might be called bayberry because it tends to grow along the bay or along the seashore. Um, it does really well in poor sandy soils. It's a nitrogen fixer, which means that it is able to actually partner with bacteria that fix nitrogen that becomes available for its growth. And even though it's called bayberry and it's often found along the seacoast, it's really plastic in terms of its habitat requirements. It's tolerant of dry conditions, wet conditions. I've seen this in sort of moist clay meadows seen this in limestone fens and I've seen this in really dry conditions back behind the dunes at places like Island Beach. One of the things that Bayberry is famous for from the historical era are its fruits over here which are little droops covered in this gray wax and some humongous copious amount of this can be melted down to make wax for bayberry candles which has a really wonderful aroma that's similar to the aroma that you get off of the foliage here. You can use the foliage like you use culinary bay so in soups and stews as a flavoring I really like making a tea out of it. This is one of my favorite native teas especially if you dry roast it in a skillet first it has a really um, it has a tea-like flavor, like the tea plant, so you could make something like an oolong tea out of this. Um, and it just has a lot of richness. It's a really full-bodied tea, and again, has that sort of citrusy bay aroma to it. These fruits over here that are covered in wax are not consumed by very many wildlife species. Most of them cannot really do anything with the waxy covering, but yellow rump warblers are able to digest the saturated long chain fatty acids here and assimilate them at a pretty high efficiency like 80 percent of this becomes food for them which is um, unusual among birds unusual among wildlife and it means that the range of yellow one warbler which used to be called myrtle warbler and this the bayberries as a genus are called myrtles sometimes is pretty much synonymous with the range of the myrtles. So let me say that again. The warblers range is really similar to the range of this genus of plants because they can depend on this food source that isn't really available to other wildlife. So you'll see yellow oak warblers up in our area even in winter when most of the other warblers have already gone south. So bayberry, native shrub, uh, sort of reluctantly deciduous leaves, makes a great tea. You could make candles if you're willing to gather a few gallons of these deer resistant, salt tolerant, tolerant of dry conditions, wet conditions. About the only thing that this shrub doesn't do well with is shade. So this is a great versatile planting for a native plant garden, for birds. Also makes a, um, a great hedge. So a good and um, useful native plant in a variety of ways for us, for wildlife, and for the plant community around it. Jared Rosenbaum, Wild Ridge Plants, thanks for listening.